All right, Gabe, um, here's what I'm gonna do to start off. I'm just gonna spread these cards out. I want you to just touch any card that you feel is, just kind of calls out to you, okay? So go ahead and just touch a card. Okay. Mm. Let's try this again. Nice. With this one right here? Yeah. Right here. Whoops, hold on. I'll show you the card. Okay, you got it? Yep. All right, you got in your mind? You sure? Yeah. Okay, so here's what we'll do. We'll put it back into the middle of the deck. I'll even spread it out so you can see it very clearly right there in the middle, and we'll push it right in, just like that. All right, and uh, we'll even give the cards a few cuts to further mix it up. Now, we're going to grab a couple cards here, and you still have your card of mind, right? So, right? Right. Okay, so I'm going to riffle through the cards, and you just call stop whenever you feel like it. Stop. Right there? All right, perfect. We'll take the card right here that you said stop at. We'll grab a few more cards just that same way. So go ahead and call stop again. Stop. All right, perfect. Uh, we'll grab two more. Stop. Perfect. Um, and one more. Stop. Right, this perfect. is fun. <laughs> All right. So anyway, so you could have stopped, called stop anywhere, and you stopped at these four cards right here. We'll even mix them up. All right. Now what I want you to do, Gabe, is I want you to hold your finger out above these cards like this. Okay. And when I say go, you're going to bring your finger down onto any one card that you okay. feel calls out to you. So when when I say go, ready? Just hold your finger right there. Ready? Go. You gotta bring it down. Let's try this again. This time, I just want you to bring it down immediately. Okay. Nope, hold on. Wait. Oh, okay. Ready? Go. All right, right there. That card, perfect. All right, keep your finger there. Oh, okay. And I want you to bring your other finger up, hold it above just like you did before, and bring that finger down on a card when I say go. Go. Don't be so rough, okay? Okay. But go ahead, just keep, hold on to those cards. We'll eliminate these ones. All right, bring your fingers back up. And actually, just cover both of these cards with your hand. When I say go, just lift up any hand that you want. Okay. Go. That one? All right, perfect. We'll eliminate that card too. That's stuck to your hand. All right, here, go ahead. Take your hand off that card and we'll just leave it right here. Now, earlier you chose the card and you, you eliminated it from all these cards. You eliminated the nine of clubs, the five of spades, and the six of clubs. Were any of those your card? No. All right. So remember, earlier you chose a card and you eliminated from all of these cards here down to one card, this card right here. Do you remember what your card was? Yeah. What was it? It was an ace. Which ace? The um, ace of one, hearts? Yeah. Perfect. Uh, Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Josiah and today I am very excited to be back with you guys. It has been quite a long time since I've been on the channel um, and um, I'm pretty excited. I have a few new things, a few new things that I've added to the studio space here, a few new pieces of equipment that will give us just a little bit more of a high quality video. Uh, as I'm sure you noticed, uh, there were multiple camera angles in that performance and uh, which is the first, the second video that I've had multiple camera angles in. It was actually the last video I was in was the first one with multiple camera angles. And uh, so definitely a little bit improvement in quality here. And uh, you'll also notice in this video, I'm in a little bit of a new location. I didn't move, I just moved the studio space in my room to over in front of my collection of playing cards here. I have this little um, bookshelf full of playing cards. And I decided since this is the Card Magic Academy, I thought it would be appropriate to put my setup in front of that library instead of um, the actual library of books that I have. So um, so we moved uh, angles, uh, kind of where I'm positioned, um, and I'm pretty excited for this video. In this video, you're gonna be learning a pretty cool card trick. This is something that I kind of threw together with a couple ideas that I had, um, and it's not necessarily a trick I can credit anywhere. Uh, I know of multiple tricks that are similar to this. Um, this is kind of how uh, I came, I kind of came up with this one, not necessarily as an original effect, but just as kind of an idea to teach you guys here because um, I realized that a while back I uploaded a video called Three Card Switches Every Magician Must Learn. And uh, the problem with that video though was that I never really taught anything you could do with those switches. I mostly just taught, I taught a card control for one of the switches, uh, but I really just kind of taught the switches alone and I didn't really teach you any tricks to kind of go along with them. So in this video I'm going to be sharing with you a trick that utilizes a card switch, one of which is taught in that video. And you could actually use multiple of these different card switches that I taught there here. I'll show you how to do that in the tutorial. But uh, you're going to learn a trick. This is a pretty cool trick where the spectator actually finds their playing card that they chose, which is a pretty cool little trick. Um, and this video will also serve a second purpose because I'm also going to be teaching about equivocate or magician's choice. 
Now this is something I think every magician should learn, um, and I'll be teaching you about it in this video, but uh, don't worry, we'll get to that eventually. And uh, yeah, so let's just get into the tutorial. All right, in this video, we're going to be using the Black National Plan Cards by Theory 11. I actually have fallen in love with this deck. I have the Green Nationals with me, and uh, this Christmas I got the Black Nationals as a present, and uh, I actually love them so much. They're actually one of my favorite decks of cards right now. Um, so there's like this gold foil on the back and stuff. It's pretty cool. But anyway, uh, I'll have a link in the description if you want to buy that deck of cards. Um, and obviously you can see we have a new top-down angle. I'm still working out the kinks in it, so it might be a little off-center, but that's okay. Um, you'll still be able to learn this pretty cool trick. So. Um, how does the trick start? So the trick starts by you handing the deck to the spectator or you can shuffle it yourself and it's, it's completely impromptu tricks. You can do it anytime, anywhere. You just have the deck shuffle. It could be any deck of cards and you have the spectator choose a card. Uh, it's important that you have them tap it and you show it to them because it's important for the switch later. So you're going to show it to the spectators. In this case, it's the seven of clubs. Now you're going to do the switch. So basically in this case with the performance, I use the top change. Uh, which basically is just this, con this right here. And once again, uh, go uh, in the description box down below to see that video about three card switches if you don't know the switch yet. But you have the seven of clubs, you do the top change, and I kind of use, uh, I kind of talk to them, I look at them, misdirect them, those kinds of things, and I kind of point to them with this hand, and that's kind of my excuse for doing the top change. I kind of point to them, I say, you sure? You memorized it. And that's kind of my excuse for it. Of course, now I have a completely different card in their hand, and in my hand, and their card is on top of the deck. So now, once I've done that, I come back here and I place the card, what they believe is their card, but it's actually a completely different card into the middle of the deck. And I like to spread it out, show it in the middle and then push it in. It's a very clean way of controlling that card at the top of the deck. Now you can use really any control you want. You could just do like a basic um, double undercut control where you get your thumb break and then you double undercut to the top like that. Um, and then get the card to the top. It really doesn't matter how you control the card to the top. You just need to make sure you control it to the top. So once you've controlled it to the top, and of course I will also mention in that video, I taught a control that used this spread switch where you flip the card over and then flip it back over like this and switch it. I did teach a control in that video. Um, so you can use that as well. But anyway, in this case, we have the seven of clubs, the spectators card control to the top. Now you're just going to do a basic riffle force. You can also do like an underhand spread force if you want. That might be another way you can do it. I've talked about it on my channel. And if you know any other card forces, you can do that as well. But for the sake of this video, we'll just do a riffle force. So we riffle through the cards. They call stop. We are, of course, just grabbing from our break. And we've just forced their own card on them. Now, of course, from here, you could just reveal this and say, there you go, you found your card. But I think this ending part with Magician's Choice seems a little, it's a little bit more fair in nature and it adds a little bit more to the effect. So then once again, I like to continue. You just need to get, have them pick out another couple cards. I would recommend maybe two or three more cards. I wouldn't recommend going more than that. Um, you just need a couple more in different cards that won't really matter. And another important thing to note is you want to do the same selection process. So if I just had them riffle through co the cards to do the riffle force, I wouldn't want to be spreading the cards all of a sudden and having them pick a card that way because that's just, that doesn't stay consistent with what I did before. So in order to stay consistent, I continue riffling through the cards, except for this time I do break where they say. I make it look the same as my riffle force. I set that card down. That's an indifferent card. And I also like to do this little cutting thing again. So I cut again. I riffle through the cards, grab a card, wherever they call stop, get that card, and do the same thing again. And now I have four cards on the table. So now you're gonna pick up these cards. The important thing is that it doesn't really matter what these three cards are, it just matters that you know where their card is. You don't know what their card is, but it's important that you know where it is. So you can do a little, you can just set the cards out like this and you know that's their card. You could also do like a little shuffling process if you want. Um, and for the shuffling process, I like to end up with the card in the third position here um, so that it ends up right here second from the left when I set the cards down. And the way I do that is I have their card on bottom. I shuffle the bottom two cards, swap their places, and then I kind of swap the places of the top two cards a couple times. I maybe, maybe I switch the bottom and uh, top and bottom cards. It really doesn't matter as long as I make sure I know where this card is. So anyway, once you've done that, you're then gonna lay out the cards and I like to lay them out with the bottom card going down first on the left and then up like that. So now I know where their card is. It's important you know where the spectator's card is. And in this case, I know their card is the second from the left, okay? And now you're going to perform Magician's Choice. Now, real quickly to explain Magician's Choice, Magician's Choice or Equivoque is basically a way of psychologically forcing something on a spectator. Basically you're doing 
is, it sounds complicated, but basically what you're doing is you're making the spectator believe that they have a completely free choice and everything is in their hands, like they're doing everything when in fact they're not. So to explain Magician's Choice very basically, we'll just use two cards. We use these two cards. This is the spectator's card and this is an indifferent card. There are lots of different ways to do this. The way I like to do this, I say, I, have, I tell the spectator to hold their finger above the cards and set it down on any card they want. So if you do this with two cards, here's how it looks. Let's say they set their finger down on this card. You say, all right, we'll eliminate that card. All right, in this case, you eliminated the Eight of Hearts, leaving you with this card, the Seven of Clubs. Now I might be saying, what if they had chosen this one? Well, in that case, with Magician's Choice, let's say they went here, I say, okay, perfect, that's your card, you eliminated this one, you chose the Seven of Clubs. Hopefully you're starting to see how Magician's Choice works. There are a few keys to performing Magician's Choice. The first is confidence, okay? Uh, if you're not confident and you don't, like if you need to act like this was what you intended to do all along, whatever decision the spectator makes, you're going to do something different, but you're gonna act like whatever decision they made, that was what you're gonna do with that decision anyway. So that's the first thing, you need to be confident, you need to kind of make it feel like the spec you're doing exactly what you intended to do all along. Second thing you need to do is um, you need to not say what you're gonna do before you do it. So you know, obviously if I say, and I say, uh, if I have, say, hold your finger up here, you're gonna choose a card. I don't wanna say that because then they think they're going to be choosing that card and that's gonna be the card they choose. Instead, I just say, put your finger down on a card because then, they don't really know what's gonna to happen to that card. They don't know if they're choosing it to like keep or whether they're, they're gonna eliminate it. They don't know. The key is that you don't tell them what you're going to do so that whatever you do next, it just seems like you were gonna do it all along. And those are really the two main keys to getting away with Magician's Choice. And it might seem kind of stressful to try and do Magician's Choice in a live performance, but I promise you that it absolutely works, okay? I have not seen Magician's Choice fail once, okay? I have been doing card tricks for a long time and I've done Magician's Choice more times than I can count. And every single time it works. The key is just being confident and making sure that you don't say what you're gonna do before you do it. So anyway, that's Magician's Choice with two, with two cards. You might be saying, what do you do with four cards? Well, you do a similar type of process. Actually, let me show you this with three cards first. If you wanna do it with just two cards, it's fine, but three cards is another option. In this case, you have them, you start by having them put their finger down on a card. If they go down onto their card, you're out, e you're out easy. You just have them slide that card toward them and that's the card they chose. If they go down to either one of these other indifferent cards, then you say, all right, hold your other finger out and you're gonna have them choose a second card. So if the second card they choose is also the indifferent card, you can eliminate both cards very cleanly. And if they choose their card, then you're gonna have them, you're gonna say, all right, we eliminated this one. All right, this is the card here. And then you can do, I, you can keep have them keep their fingers on it. I like to have them cover it and then say, all right, lift up whichever hand you want. At this point, if they lift up the indifferent one, then again, you just eliminate it. If they lift up on their card, you say that's the card they chose and you eliminate the other one, okay? So that's how you do it with three cards. And of course, remember the spectator's card is the seven of clubs here. If you do it with four cards, it's pretty much that same type of thing. Okay, so you start by having them put their finger down. Again, if they put it on in a different card, you're gonna have them choose another one. If they put it down on their card, then you're good to go. So they put, let's say they put down their card, you slide it toward them, you say we eliminated all of these, you could have chosen one of these. If the spectator puts their finger down on this card right here, let's or any one of these in different cards, let's say they put it down on this one, then you say, all right, hold your other finger out, put it down on a card as well. Uh, let's say they put it down on their card, then you proceed like you did with the three card one where you have, where you eliminate these other two and then you do the hand lifting thing. Or if they put their finger on another and different one, you say, all right, we eliminated both of those. And then you proceed once again to do the hand lifting thing. So those are, uh, now of course you don't have to do your magician's choice just like that. That's just how I would do it in, uh, any scenario. And the key is practice. Just practice like you're the spectator and practice just putting your hand down or fingers down on different combinations of cards and practice what you're gonna say, what you're gonna do for each of those combinations. The key is that no matter what they do, no matter which cards they choose, the key is that you just wanna be confident about it and you want to end up with the card they have and the card they flip over being their card. That's not their card. There's their card, okay. So it, it's just the thing, whatever, you wanna make sure that whatever card they choose, you just wanna make sure that's gonna be their card. And that's, that's the key. So again, just be confident about it and uh, don't say what you're gonna do before you do it and it'll all fly by. I promise you with practice and uh, 
you know, just being confident about it, you this will absolutely. One of my favorite tricks ever that I carry with me all the time with me and that I have performed many times, it's called Wave by uh, Max Maven. And that trick uses Magician's Choice. And I, it's one of my favorite tricks ever, and it gets it goes by every time because as long as you're confident about magician's choice, and as long as it seems you make it seem to the spectator without saying like this is what I was planning to do all along, without saying it explicitly, just acting as if this was what you intended to do all along, then it will absolutely fly by. So anyway, let's run through a scenario. Let's say you hold their finger out, they put their card down on this one, they put it, then they put it down on this one. You say, okay, oh, we we'll eliminate those ones. And then you say, all right, cover these ones, lift up whichever hand you want. Let's say they lift up this one. You say, all right, we'll eliminate the one under your hand. All right, perfect. So now they're left with one card. And then I like to take these three cards and show them just to say, all right, you could have chosen one of these cards. And then I like to kind of do a little recap thing and spread out the cards here just to kind of show, um, you know, you could have chosen any one of these cards. And then of course I have them turn over the card in their hand and it is none other than their card, the Seven of Clubs. So I know this is already kind of a lengthy video, but I did want to run through that just one more time for you, just so you know how that plays out. You have the spectator choose a card. They choose this card. You show it to them. In this case, it's the Five of Diamonds. You do the top change as you point. You come back, you put it in the middle of the deck, spread the cards out, place that card back in. And then of course, then you force the card on the spectator, have them choose a couple of cards. In this case, we'll just grab the rest of our cards here. We'll do four cards in this case. You pick up these cards. You can do whatever shuffling process you want as long as you keep track of where their card is. Let's say their card ends up here in the third position. Of course, you just wanna make sure you keep track of where their card is. You set the cards out and then you do Magician's Choice. You have, let's say they go down with this one and then you slide it forward. Reveal these, reveal all of these cards right here, and then they flip over their card. And that is the trick. So anyway, let's just head to the outro. All right, and that's it. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you be notified when I upload a new video. I am uh, pretty excited to be back. I hope you enjoyed that trick. Hope you perform it well, practice it well. And again, about Magician's Choice, I know when you're a beginner or when you're first starting out Magic, Magician's Choice may seem pretty daunting and it may seem like it will never work in real life. There's no way that people would actually fall for that. But trust me, as long as you follow my tips, just don't tell people what you're gonna do before you do it and just be confident about it. I promise that Magician's Choice will fly by, okay? I've done it tons of times. I promise you that it will work. Just go out and try it and make sure to practice it, of course, before you do it, uh, but practice and just being confident about it, I promise it'll go well for you. But anyway, uh, that's it, so I'll see you in the next video.